I will start with a joke because I believe that humor is one of the most powerful weapons against all forms of hatred, dictatorship and oppression. The joke is from the Soviet Union era when a communist officer was walking down the street and suddenly he sees an old Jewish man uh, sitting on the street and uh, learning Hebrew. And he comes to him and says, Jew, why are you studying Hebrew? You know that we will not let you practice your religion and we will not let you go to Israel. And the Jew looks at him as, and says, you know, sir, this is in case I get to heaven. And the communist guy thinks for a moment and then his eyes start to shine and uh, he says, and what if you end up in hell? And uh, the old Jewish man says, thank you for the question, I can speak Russian already. Uh, dear representatives of the Czech Bishops' Conference, the Ecumenical Council of Churches, Federation of Jewish Communities and Institute for Christian Democratic Policy, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for the opportunity to talk to you on behalf of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which defends uh, religious freedoms and the freedom of religious belief in uh, multilateral organizations, such as the United Nations Human Rights Council, as well as bilaterally. We collaborate with dozens of countries, and uh, some of them are represented uh, in this hall. With great pleasure, I would like to announce that uh, Chernin Palace, uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, is uh, red lit today as well. And the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, Jan Lipavsky, has granted his auspices to Red Wednesday. He is not able to participate himself because he is currently in Brussels, where he is co-presiding the Council of the European Economic Area. As a special envoy for the Holocaust, interfaith dialogue and freedom of religion, I defend the approach uh, where we fight for religious freedom at the level of uh, public administration, churches, human rights and humanitarian organizations, all together. I greatly value the fact that Christians, Jews and Muslims are trying to help one another and oppose war, terrorism and violence, especially now when we are undergoing one of the most difficult time periods of our lives. Russian aggression in the Ukraine, where people cannot practice their religion, they are left without electricity in such cold weather, including children, as father of four children, I think of them every morning. How can the mothers in Ukraine send their children to school in the morning without electricity and without heating? Children are the biggest victims of this senseless and pointless war. This is why it was so important for me that uh, the representatives of uh, the different religions uh, in this country met at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to issue an open letter to representatives of churches in Russia asking them to help end this war. I am happy to announce that in response to this letter, one of the small churches uh, published this letter in Russian on its website in Russia. This is an act of great courage and the letter was received with great international attention. We are living in a difficult time of security crisis coming, economic crisis. According to some statistics, the level of democracy in the world has dropped to the levels of 1989. 70% of global population live in dictatorships. In this period, intolerance, xenophobia, hatred, uh, violence and anti-Semitism may be on the rise. This is why it is a great honor for me to have been elected uh, the Vice President of the International Alliance for Religious Freedom. Uh, its members are 37 countries of the world. In this alliance, we are taking concrete steps for concrete people uh, who are suffering for their belief or religion. 
and uh, together we issue declarations uh, where we urge governments of countries where religious freedom is a problem. I would like to invite you to make use of the potential of this alliance. We can work to, together to achieve a greater impact. On the 1st of December, with the participation of the president of this alliance, Fiona Bruce, I would like to open the regional roundtable in Prague in order to permit a tighter cooperation of people in Central Europe, who people who are interested in religious freedom. Only through tight and efficient cooperation can we overcome the problems of these difficult times. However, I am sure that we will make it and we will be stronger and more human than before. Allow me to finish with a quote of our first president, the first president of Czechoslovakia, Tomáš Garik Masaryk, who saw close links between religion and uh, humanity. He said, religion without humanity cannot be right. Humanity without piety cannot be complete. Thank you for your attention. Thank you to Robert Dehag for his opening words and also for the opening joke. Now I will hand over to the representatives of the religious organizations uh, uh, for whom freedom of religion is of utmost importance. First is the General Secretary of the Czech Bishops' Conference, uh, Father uh, Přibyl, Stanislav Přibyl. Excellencies, friends, I would like to greet you very briefly. I am very glad that uh, for the fifth time the Czech Bishops' Conference together with the other partners, the Federation of Jewish Communities, the Ecumenical Council of Churches, uh, we can co-organize this event, Red Wednesday, and for the fourth time we have uh, international participation and we are talking about religious freedom. This is a kind of repayment of our debt. There were long periods of time when we were waiting for someone to remember us, for someone to talk about us and defend us. and. Uh, Despite all the difficult circumstances brought about by these times, we live in times of great freedom where we can uh, practice our faith as we please. And this is a gift and we have the obligation to repay this debt, to uh, raise attention, raise awareness of uh, people who cannot enjoy these privileges. It's a great gift that we can uh, speak, think and act uh, in accordance with our conscience and in accordance uh, with what our faith tells us. On this last Wednesday before the Advent period, we are meeting together to discuss this important issue. We can pray together and we can demonstrate together that we think that uh, religious freedom, the freedom of conscience, of faith, are important and we can support uh, those who need our support. Thank you for your participation today. I look forward to our afternoon and evening together. We thank you. You must have noticed that the red scarf as well. We also have the General Secretary of the Ecumenical Council of Churches in the Czech Republic, Mr. Petr Jan Vinch. The floor is yours. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me say hello on behalf of the Ecumenical Council of Churches in the Czech Republic. In the Czech Republic, Red Wednesday has a special flavor Based on our experience, we know what religious oppression means, and the current society is very much a secular one. This is the reason why 
an idea that the freedom of religion is one of the most fundamental human rights is more and more important, and I'm very pleased about that. We saw in the history of our country, but also of many other countries, where the freedom of religion is not respected, that if you oppress the freedom of religion, you will very soon start oppressing other freedoms as well. We need to stand up for the freedom of religion, even if it's not only about our own faith. I'm proud that the way we commemorate Red Wednesday is a way of respecting also other religions who may be persecuted elsewhere in the world. The freedom of faith, be it any faith, does not depend on whether you are a member of a certain affiliation or a certain church. For me, Red Wednesday is a very symbolic day. For me, this is a day on which we can together express our respect and help to the suffering people, and we may also remind ourselves of the fact that in the Czech Republic we can practice our faith without any problems and completely freely. It is a commitment for us not to forget about the others who are not so lucky elsewhere in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Vinch. You are wearing a very nice red vest or sweater. And the last opening speech will be given by the Secretary of the Federation of Jewish Communities in the Czech Republic, Michal Perišek. Ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, on behalf of the Federation of Jewish Communities in the Czech Republic, I would like to welcome you to the conference that has been organized on a day which traditionally is called Red Wednesday. I would like to thank all of the co-organizers of this initiative. It is an honor for me that we can cooperate in this long-term cooperation with Christian churches and organizations. It is a kind of cooperation which shows and leads by example. But this has not been the case always. That is why I appreciate our friendship so much. We can all feel what sense there is in it and uh, how uh, pleasant it is. But of course, it is not something to be obvious. Red Wednesday is organized to commemorate individuals and groups of people who are persecuted for their faith in the entire world. I would like Red Wednesday to lose its sense. That means that we would be in a situation in which no one in this world would be persecuted for his or her faith or belief. But unfortunately, we cannot achieve this beautiful goal very soon. So we have to try to do our utmost. And that is why Red Wednesday is so important. Let's talk together, let's discuss things, and let's share our experiences, and let's look for ways to support the people who are persecuted, or how to prevent such persecution, or at least uh, mitigate this 